The next movie on the docket from the DC animated universe is Justice League Throne of Atlantis, which is the sequel to Justice League War, a direct sequel. In fact, it was teased in the post credit scene, or I'm sorry, the mid credit scene of Justice League. What was it, mid or post? I don't remember. Well, anyways, it was teased in there, and it is the next movie in the saga. Now, if you're new here, I'm basically going to be reviewing all of the DC AMU films. And they're on HBO Max, and they're also available on Blu-ray and DVD. So if you're watching this, go ahead and check out my other reviews in this playlist on my channel. Um, so you can get caught up with my thoughts on them. And also, don't forget to watch along. What we're doing is we're going to be watching the movie, or the movies. And if you've already seen them, great. You can watch them again. If not, that's okay too. And if you've never seen them, then watch them along with me. And please leave your comments down below with your thoughts. Today, we've gotten up to... Throne of Atlantis, which is basically the introduction of Aquaman into the DC AMU. Obviously, you know, I was, as I was watching Justice League War, I was wondering, where's Aquaman at? Like, where's he at? And, of course, now we know. And the mid credit scene, or whatever that was, teased it. And this movie's all about Arthur Curry. It's all about him. It's all about him Sort of in a very similar plot to the James Wan Aquaman film where he has to regain his throne. He has to get back down there and fix the problems that Ocean Master started. And let me tell you something right now, yo. Ocean Master, bro. Bro. Ocean Master was a prick, dude. Ocean Master was an absolutely vicious heel in this episode or in this uh you know movie whatever you want to call it episode in the dcamu in this movie he was a complete dick the things that he did in this film to control the trenches and to control atlantis was just crazy a lot of this movie was spent on really focused on aquaman and his story which i really liked you know justice league war told the origin story of cyborg and the other heroes were already there and this movie told the story of sort of Aquaman and his journey back to Atlantis after not really caring too much. And then, you know, it was different than the James Wan Aquaman film, but it wasn't that different. You know, and I did like, really enjoyed the way they reintroduced the League here with, uh, with Green Lantern and Batman sort of reintroduction from the previous film. Also, Black Manta was a great villain in this. The villains in this really stood out to me. Black Manta... And Ocean Master, to me, kind of stole the show. They really did. And one thing that kind of took me off guard is when they're actually fighting Ocean Master near the end of the film, he's using that trident. And, dog, Ocean Master was, like, smashing these guys. Like, Superman, Wonder Woman were getting thrown around. Shazam! I was just like, whoa. I was like, this guy is... Now, now, forgive me, I haven't read every DC comic. I'm not familiar with Ocean Master outside of, you know, these films and the Aquaman film. So I don't know much about Orm. But when he's fighting Superman, throwing him around, I'm like, is that accurate? Did that happen in the comics? And I know that the Trident is very powerful, but I mean, damn. You know, he made mince me out of Green Lantern. Now, Aquaman was great in this. I really liked the Arthur Curry story with him fighting those dudes early in the film. Um, those punks. You know, he's, he's, of course, very strong. But Mira, Mira really was awesome in this. I loved Mira and how she used her water-controlling abilities. Dude, and she was voiced great by Suma Lee Montan M Montano. Excuse me. She was voiced great. Um, and as I watch this, I'm really loving Jason O'Mara's Bruce Wayne. You know, as a Bruce Timm fan, I'm always going to love... You know, Kevin Conroy, I'll always love him, but Jason O'Mara is getting better and better and better. I think he did a great, great, great job in this. I think he did a fantastic job. But, uh, man, yeah, Mira was awesome. And they drew her super hot, I mean, obviously. And I liked sort of the arc with Aquaman. Like I said, it's an Aquaman-focused story, and it's interesting because both this and the James Wan film have kind of taken Aquaman and made him so much more than what he used to be. You know, a lot of fans think that Aquaman's just some guy who talks to fish. I mean, it became like a joke, you know, in the in the 
movies and everywhere for years, mostly because of the old Super Friends show, which I still like, but I mean, it's a different kind of show than what this is. And uh, I really enjoyed seeing this play out. Of course, this is based on a Jeff John's Throne of Atlantis storyline from the New 52. I think that was New 52, right? I don't remember. It was... Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. It was New 52, yeah. And um, the music in this, Frederick Wyman, great, great job. It was directed by Ethan Spaulding, who I think Ethan Spaulding directed... Um, I think he worked on Avatar, The Last Airbender. I think he was on that show. And I think he directed another one of these, but I don't really know which one. Um, don't remember which one. But anyways, the fights in this, the violence, you know, I was a little confused because the Justice League is able to breathe underwater in a lot of this, and I wasn't sure if they were able to all do that. I didn't know they had that ability. That was a little bit weird. Um Maybe I'm just ignorant. Like I said, I don't know DC like I do Marvel. So whenever I talk to y'all, I'm very honest. And if you're looking for a comic book expert, that's not me, dude. I'm just giving you my thoughts. I, when it comes to, I mean, I, I know a lot about certain characters and Marvel and, and whatnot. But DC, I'm a little bit fuzzy on. You know, I've read some DC, but nowhere near as much as Marvel. Nowhere near as much. Now, the post credit scene, they introduced Lex Luthor which is obviously going to be building up to the next Justice League film, but the next film, part of the DC... I think Actually, I think the next DC AMU film is going to be Batman vs. Robin, which is going to continue the Damian Wayne storyline, so I'm looking forward to that for sure. You know, you can watch the Batman films on their own, but I know that at some point Damian, Wayne's, Damian Wayne gets uh, put into the Justice League, not necessarily as a member, but I know that he um, ends up like working with them, you know, or whatever. Like he's in the movies, he's in these movies. So you shouldn't just watch Justice League or you shouldn't just watch the Batmans. You should watch these in order. You know, the DC AMU movies should be watched in order. They are a cinematic universe. And the next movie is a Batman film. In fact, the next two are Batman films, Batman vs. Robin and Batman Bad Blood. And then we come back to Batman vs. Teen Titans. Which actually, Ethan Spaulding did direct Son of Batman. And I really like Son of Batman, so uh, credit to him on that. Anyways, what did you think about Justice League Throne of Atlantis? I like, honestly, I liked it more than Justice League War. War had some great stuff with Batman and it had some great stuff with Darkseid. Um, but it was almost too rushed in many ways. Uh, but this... I thought was enjoyable. Wonder Woman's new voice actress. I mean, I really love the stuff with her and Bruce trying to date and then Lois showing up. I forgot to mention that. Dude, I love that stuff. I love the stuff with Lois and Bruce. And I'm sorry, with, bro, Lois and Bruce. Clark, I'm an idiot. Clark Kent. The Wonder Woman, Clark Kent stuff. Diana and Clark Kent trying to like date and, you know, with their, with their alter egos. That was fun. You know, but the next movie we're going to be watching, probably next week I'll have the review up, so y'all have a week to check it out, is going to be Batman vs. Robin. That's the next Justice League film um, from 2015. So we'll be watching that, and then I'll give you my thoughts, and then we'll follow up with Batman Bad Blood, both directed by Jay Oliva, who also directed Flashpoint Paradox and Justice League War. So he's got experience doing these movies. I think, I think he also comes back for Justice League Dark. So, um, and that's going to be coming up in the future. So, anyways, I like this film. Uh, better story, I think, than War. I liked it a little bit more than War, but uh, I think War may have been more fun. But I, I, nothing will top Flashpoint Paradox for me, at least not yet. We'll see what happens. Anyways, I'll talk to you all soon in the Geekdom 101 DC AMU Movie Club. And peace.